You don't have to be great in math to be able to figure out and solve this math problem right here without using a calculator. As long as you have basic math skills, you should be able to get this problem right. Okay, so what's going on here? Well, we have five squared divided by five to the fifth power. So once again, try not to use a calculator, but uh, if you have the answer, put that into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then of course, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to solve this problem without using a calculator. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, now before I show you the answer here, let's take another look at this problem. And uh, again, all you really need here is basic math to get the right answer. Now, if you're saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I am totally confused. You're making me feel bad. Well, don't feel bad. You probably forgot this. But uh, if you got this right, here is the answer that you should have gotten. Again, 5 squared divided by 5 to the fifth is equal to the following, 1 over 125. All right, now, if you did get this right, you definitely get a happy face and an A plus for being able to deal with a basic math problem without a calculator. And if you didn't get it right, well, don't feel bad. You probably just forgot this stuff and that's no big deal. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this uh, problem right now. And what are we dealing with? Well, these things right here are what we call powers in mathematics. Now, if you don't understand what a power is, well, of course, you're going to be confused. So let's go ahead and review this uh, right now. Okay, so this is a five squared, okay? But really, it's five to the second power. So let's get some basic terminology down here. So five to the second power. So there are two parts to a power, okay? This top little number, and uh, you always put it to the top right, it's called the exponent. And then the big number down here is called the base. So this is called, again, the exponent. This is called the base. The entire thing is called a power, all right? So here we have five to the second power. But what does this mean in mathematics? Well, it means that we're going to take this number here, which is the base, okay, so we have 5, and we're going to multiply it by itself this many times, all right? So we're going to multiply the base 5 times itself 2 times. So this means 5 times 5. We have two 5s right here, so 5 times 5, of course, is 25. All right, so that's how you work with a power. Let me erase this, and let's just uh, practice this with 5 to the 5th right here. All right, so five to the fifth power, what do you think this means? Well, if you're saying MSD to math, man, five to the fifth power probably means take five and multiply it by itself five times, and you would be uh, correct, all right? So one, two, three, four, five. So we have five times five times five times five times five. Now, that's a lot of fives to multiply by, and uh, you know, might be saying, I'm not going to do that, Mr. YouTube Math Man. You know, I'm just here to try to learn something. I don't want to do all that multiplication, and I don't blame you. So this problem right here, we can make it a lot easier without having to do all this multiplication, right? So some of you might be uh, saying, well, do we have to take this 5 squared, which is 25, and then divide it by the answer to this, and then, like, reduce a fraction? No, no, uh, there is a simpler approach, and let's go ahead and get into that right now. So I'm gonna show you two approaches that you can take to solve this problem. But the first thing that we wanna realize is that we can write this problem in a different way. So anytime you see a division operator, what you can be thinking about is a fraction. This is actually the numerator and this is actually the denominator. So I can write this entire problem this way, five squared divided by five to the fifth power, okay? And writing the problem this way it gives me a lot of advantages. All right, so right here I have five squared divided by five to the fifth. I'm gonna be thinking about this problem um, as a fraction, five squared over five to the fifth. Now, why is this a good thing? Well, because I can write out all these fives in this manner. So five squared, I know is the same thing as five times five, and five to the fifth is five times five times five times five times another five. Okay, so right now we are set up 
to do some nice simplification on this problem and actually get the right answer. But uh, before I do that, let me show you very quickly what's going on here with cross-canceling, which uh, I'm going to be doing in just one second. So if I gave you the fraction, let's say 10 over 20, okay, and I told you to reduce that fraction, most of you would say, oh, Mr. YouTube Math Man, that's easy. That is one half, and you would be perfectly correct. But really what's going on here is that 10 over 20, 10 is equal to what? Well, I can write this in terms of its factors, right? So I can write this, I can break this up into the into a product of the factors of 10. So that would be 1 and 10. There's other factors as well, but I'm just going to use 1 and 10. And then 20 is the same thing as 2 times 10. So factors of 20 are 2 and 10, and factors of 10 are, are 1 and 10. Now, anytime you have the same factor in the numerator and denominator, now remember, uh, factors are being separated by multiplication, but anytime you have the same uh, factor in the numerator and the denominator, you can cross cancel them, and then what's left is the answer. Okay, so when you're reducing a fraction, this is really what's going on. You're kind of breaking up these values into uh, factors. You're looking for like factors, and then you're cross canceling like factors. And of course, you can see right here, we have a ton of like factors. Now, the thing to keep in mind is that this factor can cross cancel only. Uh, one five, so it's it's one factor per one factor. In other words, this five cannot cross cross cancel every single five up in the numerator and vice versa. So we have a five here and we have a five here. We cross cancel uh, these two fives. I have a five here and a five here. Cross cancel these two fives. Now you might be saying, "Hey, Mr. Two Math Man, there's no more numbers up in the numerator." Yes, there's always a one. So what do we have left? We have one over five times five times five which is what? Well, that's pretty easy to multiply because 5 times 5 times 5 is what? Well, 5 times 5 is 25. 25 times 5 is 125. Now, that's a lot better than multiplying 5 fives, right? So now we have 125 as our denominator. So the final answer is 1 over 125. Okay, so this is by far the easiest way to do this problem without a calculator. And now I'm going to show you a kind of fancier way to uh, work with powers and exponents. And uh, again, this uh, technique that I'm going to show you uh, next is uh, kind of a longer way, but it's an important um, kind of introduction to properties of powers and exponents. So when you um, learn mathematics, especially like at the algebra level, you really have to know how to work with powers and exponents, how to divide powers and exponents, how to multiply and do all sorts of other things as well. And one particular property when you are dividing two powers, again, we're going to be thinking about this problem this way, 5 squared over 5 to the fifth. Well, we have a great property that tells us what to do when we are dividing powers, and that is the following. So it's a to the m over a to the n is equal to a to the m minus n. Okay, so this is what we call a property of powers and exponents. And there's like five others. Uh, and typically, again, you're going to learn this in algebra. But uh, what does this mean? Well, it means that if you are dividing powers and the bases are the same, okay, the bases, again, are these numbers right here, five and five. These are the base parts. The little numbers up there are the exponents. So what we can do, matter of fact, let me just write it this way, five squared over five to the fifth. So what we can do is follow um, the formula, okay, or the property. So what it says is that if you're dividing two powers, okay, which we are here, and the bases are the same, which of course these are, all we have to do is subtract the exponents, but notice what exponent comes first. It's the numerator exponent. So here, this is going to be equal to 5 to the m minus n, or 2 minus 5. Five. You see, we're just following the pattern, okay? So the denominator exponent comes second. So 5 to the 2 minus 5 is what? Well, if you know how to add and subtract positive and negative, negative numbers, this is going to be 5 to the negative 3 power. Okay, so the answer here is 5 to the negative 3 power. But some of you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I thought the answer was 1 over 125. Well, it is, because now I need to show you another uh, property of powers and exponents so we can get the right answer. Okay, so this is our answer, but uh, in mathematics, we typically don't like to leave our answers with negative exponents. So I'm going to show you another property here, and that is a to the negative n is equal to 1 over 
a to the n power. All right, so again, a lot of properties here. So let's go ahead and take a look at our answer. So 5 to the negative 3 is equal to what? Well, here, this is the property for dealing with a negative exponent. So if you have a negative exponent like we do right here, you can write this as a fraction where it's 1 over the same um, power, but look, if you look at the power, it goes from negative to positive, right? So it's 1 over a to the n. So a to the negative n is equal to 1 over a to the n. So we're just going to follow the pattern. So this is going to be 1 over, now we have our power down here, but instead of it being uh, negative, it's going to be positive. So that's going to be 5 cubed. So now I have 1 over 5 cubed. We know that 5 cubed is 125. So we get our answer 1 over 125. All right, so now why did I show you uh, this second technique? Because you might be saying, hey, Mr. D2 Math Man, that first technique was way easier. Well, I'm showing you this because this is, um, you know, these properties are what you're really going to need to know in algebra, okay? But uh, oftentimes, even if you forget a property by just kind of reasoning through with some kind of common sense, as long as you understand, again, you know, um, uh, how to work with basic powers and exponents, you can kind of almost like reverse engineer some of these properties, all right? But uh, as I indicated in the beginning of this video, as long as you have basic math skills and you understand, you know, um, basic powers, okay, which hopefully uh, all of you um, out there do, and if you didn't, hopefully you do now, and well, then, you know, that's all it really takes uh, to solve this problem. Okay, now, if you forgot all this kind of math, you might, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, it's been a long time, maybe it was like 19... 72 or 1981 since you've really dealt with any math well i'm going to invite you to uh first of all do a few things the first is maybe you might want to consider subscribing to my youtube channel now if you want to brush up on math i pretty much post at a minimum a video a day and i've been on youtube for years and i try to really spread my um videos around from basic math to advanced math like calculus and everything in between so if you go into my channel and search, you know, various algebra, geometry, trigonometry, you know, basic fraction problems, word problems. I love doing word problems because I find them interesting. And I think a lot of people find math word problems interesting as well. Well, I pretty much have it all on my YouTube channel and I'm always adding to my library. But uh, here's the thing. You know, practicing problems like, you know, in an informal way, you know, that's, I think, good if you're interested in math. But if you really uh, truly want to kind of rebuild your math skills or if you are taking a math class and you need serious math help, well, check out my full main math courses. I'm going to leave links to those in the description of this video. And kind of what we're doing here is like stuff that you will learn like in the pre-algebra or algebra one level. So if you're, at, uh, if you're in these courses, you can check those courses out. Now, if you just kind of want to rebuild your math skills from the ground up, check out my math skills rebuilder course. Here I start with basic foundational math, like elementary math, fractions, uh, you know, uh, how to add, multiply numbers, all that kind of good stuff. And then I uh, build up from uh, there into algebra, geometry, and a lot of other topics as well. But I definitely need your help to be able to help others on YouTube. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And if you're going to do that, hit that bell notification as well. And with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.